folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. It's uh, been a while, uh, been really busy, had a lot of bad weather, and uh, just doing uh, busy bee chores here in central Oklahoma. It's uh, Sunday, January 28th, it's a beautiful day. It's uh, 58 degrees right now, we're probably gonna hit 60. So it's, it's really nice out, light breeze. The bees are already flying, someone came by and picked up some honey a while ago and I'm about out it's I've got six or seven bottles left and uh, bee was flying up around <laughs> when they were coming up here so bees are out flying which means they're burning up their resources and uh, when there's nothing for them to eat that makes the resources go faster so uh, I've been putting some sugar out and things like that we just came through a two-week period where we had a lot of really really cold weather it was uh, zero degrees one day, and I think it got down to two below the next day. And it stayed below freezing almost two weeks. And my, uh, my aerobic septic system actually froze up. The sprinklers were up and frozen solid. <laughs> so, uh, and they were busted, so I had to have those replaced. And uh, they froze again right after they got replaced, but. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that. Anyway, uh, just going to walk around a little bit, show you what's going on, show you what I got going on in the apartment there. I'm expecting some uh, things coming in the mail, uh, so we'll have a box opening. Uh, Sarah Cell contacted me and also uh, Better Be, so we've got some things coming in that we're going to open up and show you what's going on there, which is good timing for a lot of it because we're just about to get started. So today, uh, I'm going to try to get in the hives. Some of, well, I'm gonna check all the weight and uh, see where they're at. I have put some sugar on uh, between some cold spells. It, it got up to like 41 day and, and I went out there and I, I put some sugar in a few of them and some were pretty light. I did find one uh, that didn't make it. So uh, one of the weaker hives, I think it's number two. Anyway, we'll get over there and look at that real quick. And uh, Gonna throw the chickens some bread real quick and let's get into the apartment. What's up? Wow! <laughs> so we had a problem this winter with uh, Bobcat got in here a couple times and also some raccoons have been getting in here. Just some old bread, they'll take care of that. Got some uh, green bean ends there that they're working on. A little bit of corn. So the rack, the uh, bobcat got in uh, back here in this corner and I actually got a video uh, of that bobcat walking Lost my hat. <laughs> Walking right along here. And uh, I didn't get the video of it coming in, but you can see on these posts the wood posts where he climbed up it and where he came in and out and it was right here on this one here so i put this piece of metal up here to keep him from getting in this spot anyway but if you look real close you can see scratches and this is where he he came in and out and we lost three chickens to that then a raccoon got in here and couldn't get out and it, it dug and dug so there's there's fence that goes along the dirt out for a couple feet and he dug and dug all around. He finally got his way out right here and uh, I filled it back in. <clears throat> but he's actually been in here since then and it's a little one. I keep losing my hat. <laughs> what are you doing? Fuck, 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 fuck. Anyway, chickens did well in this uh, really cold spell. 
I've got a, you can see a cord coming in here and had a heat lamp on there. Uh, you can see that's upside down. It's 64 degrees in here now. <clears throat> I got that set where it kicks that lamp on at 40 degrees. And uh, they did fine. This here's a heated water, so that kept their water from freezing. Looks like there's a couple ladies sitting right there. So they just have recently started laying. Uh, they almost, well actually they did shut down. They weren't, they weren't laying any eggs for almost a month. That's the first time I've ever had chickens just totally shut down. Looks like we got a couple eggs here. Hey there. So I think we've been getting at least three or four a day. Let's get out of here. Let's get up to the barn. One thing I do need to do is open up this uh, coal frame. So there's some greens growing in here and it will flat out get too hot in there. Let's see what the temperature is in there. Uh, it is 105 degrees in this thing right now. Good grief. And it's 55 out here. There we go. Got a brick in there. There, so now we'll get the benefit of the heat plus... Uh, Keep it ventilated. So I've been working on frames and cleaning them up, getting them waxed. So I got five here in this little nook. See, that's all fresh waxed. And this was an old frame that had old brew comb on it. I scraped it and power washed it. And all of these have had that done and then they've all been waxed with fresh wax. So the brood comb that I melted down, I strained it out and used the wax out of that old brood comb. And I strained it out and uh, did a couple different renders on it. Got some, uh, putting some boxes together. These are Honey Super boxes. I got some deeps here in storage and it all has comb in there. Got some unassembled deeps there. And I got another box of five deeps right here I'll be putting together. And here's some of my frames that are new that I haven't ever used. And I've got a few plastics left. I think I got these from Hillco and they're Pureco heavy wax and their wax is pretty good got me some wax sticks here that i rub on a few of the spots where it needs uh needs touched up a little bit i've got lots of glass honey jars left i don't do a whole lot of those but most of my plastic ones i've gone to bulk and <laughs> here's some more over here that uh I do like two cases of this a year and that pretty much uh, takes care of everybody. Got some uh, feeding shims here with the hardware cloth in the bottom. So when you fill these up, you put like a piece of uh, paper towel or newspaper over this, fill it with uh, sugar. Uh, wet sugar so it sticks and makes a big big chunk and got some frames over here I need to get foundation in that's about all I've got going on out here here's where I did my wax so I use a wax roller that stuck right now you get the gist so there's that wax from that old brood comb turned out you know it's dark but uh it works good 
We're doing the brood comb. And here's some more I've been putting in. Here's some frames that were partially drawn out. I just set aside. So getting ready for next year. Here's ones that I cleaned up. And I put 24 on the end. Uh, you can see some of them didn't clean up real well. I'm assuming these will work okay as long as they got wax on them. But these have been power washed. And the boxes I put together last night. Man, it got cold out here last night. We didn't get much above freezing yesterday. So that's about it. Getting ready for springtime. These will need painted. And I got all my honey supers are stored right here. So those will be ready to go on. Most of these have drawn comb ready to go. So the bees can fill it up a lot faster. And I've got lots of uh, honey super frames. And I've got a box of, of wax comb that I'll put in those as well. All right, let's get inside the apartment. All right. So I've been putting, the, uh, making some uh, sugar cakes. So this is from a 25 pound bag of sugar and I had a five gallon bucket that was about a third full of sugar. And this is a huge cookie sheet here. It's, it's bigger than what your standard oven will hold. Uh, this is a normal size one here. But to, what I do is I put, that sh put the sugar into a bucket and add a little bit of water and a little bit of uh, like a tablespoon of this Pro Health per each uh, 10 pounds or so. So I put two tablespoons in, into what I did here and I mix it up with this uh, paint mixer on my drill and just dump it out into these trays flatten it out and I use a spatula to make the little ridges in between so when we're ready we can uh, just pop them out of there see if I can get one out and I ran my uh, dehumidifier in here down to 45% so that helped uh, dry them out. There you go. Nice sugar cake. It's still a little wet on the bottom. So we'll get these out there and uh, put a few on the hives and see how much they've consumed. So here's one of those uh, feeder shims with the hardware cloth. You can see where I put the paper towels down. If I can get a hold of it there, you can see the uh, hardware cloth. This one's half inch. I think that other way out there was quarter. And I didn't have enough sugar to fill this all the way up, but uh, once I got these two trays done, I just put what I had left in this to place to get it dried out. So we can put this on a hive just like that, and uh, they'll get in there and start working on that. And something to note about these, they have a, uh, a little ventilation hole here, and it's got uh, cover on it so the bees can't robber bees can't come in there and get through there so back in here in the bedrooms where we keep our uh, the wife brought all the ferns in uh, on days that it freezes I think there's eight in here but some of them are really big probably need to water them and uh, we can probably get them outside here before long but I keep them in here and we got space heaters in this apartment to keep it warm. I got this fan uh, keeping the air circulating. And keep these little space heaters in here. They're set as low as they will go. And when it got down to like zero degrees, they were keeping it uh, just below uh, 50 degrees in this apartment. And also have thermostat in here that I can see on my Wi-Fi. So it's uh, 53 degrees now, 47% humidity. I've also got one of these out in my well 
thing out in the garage so my where my pressure tank is and all that it won't freeze and I can keep an eye on that and also in that water closet back in that restroom where the hot water heater I've got one in there I can keep track of that and uh, I got one more I'm going to put out in the barn so I can see what uh, temperature it gets out there like in the summertime it gets really hot and uh, so that's the brand right there Thermo Pro they work really good and uh, I bought this thing here to connect to my space heaters to see how often they run but I haven't got around to that yet so as I got a clamp meter I want to put on those and monitor that to see how much power I'm pulling to keep this thing warm out here that's about it I got one of these uh, NOCO boost jump starters at Christmas time man that thing's great uh, my four-wheeler was down and it cranked that sucker right up now one more new acquisition I got around Christmas I got this Excalibur dehydrator and I think it has 10 trays there's a bunch so I made me some uh, pepper some uh, crushed red pepper and I also made some uh, jalapeno and I started out with this little one here and man it took forever so I've added on to that so I'll have this big one here next summer to use or in the fall when all the peppers really come in and uh, I'm going to make a lot more of that boy it'll sure make you sneeze if you uh, if you ever mess with pepper before you know it'll uh, it'll get right up your nose anyway let's uh let's get this stuff into a bucket and we will work on getting out there to the hives and seeing what they look like do some weight checks yeah and i move these around i like to just put them in a bucket and just stack them up in there and you'll have a little bit of breakage but that's okay as long as they're together for the most part i'll just put these in there like that no it's too long so they just snap apart real easy and uh, if you're in a hurry to get these dry you can put them in the oven at you know a real low temperature because you don't want to melt the sugar so like about oh probably 150 degrees if you if your oven will go that low i i use this oven on warm uh, last year and uh, it turned it a little bit brown and I think it was close to 200 degrees on the, the lowest setting I could get it on. But the bees didn't care that the sugar was brown. It seemed to work out okay. This is my wife's nice spatula. She was asking about it <laughs> the other day. Like, I don't know. I haven't seen it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but it works good for this because it's it's a sturdy one, man. I mean, it's, it's stiff. She's like, aren't you using that down there for your bees or something? And honestly, at the time, I couldn't remember, but I did find it later inside this bucket. So I'm like, oh, yeah, she was right. It is down here. Okay. Let's uh, let's get out there and see what we find. Another thing I've been doing is I connected a charger to my mower battery to keep it up all the time, especially through that cold weather. Let's uh, get this show on the road and quit yapping. Boy, the bees are already all over that. They can smell it.
Well, let's do a quick walk around. Yeah, all the bees are flying. So we'll uh, see if we see any of this. There's no activity in the front. We'll know we've got a problem. All these look good. See, I put these uh, big pieces of plywood up uh, on each end to for a north wind block. Now there's nothing coming out of this one because there's no hive. There's no bees in that. That's just some extra boxes. Everything looks good. I see activity on all of them here. I'll take these down. Those big plywood boards. Let's get over here on the south end of the main area. Man, the bees is just, it looks like a, a forage day in the spring, man. They are, the air is just full right here. And this hive right here, they're all coming out right now. All right, one right there. Let's see if I can get up here close. Man, look at that. <laughs> they're boiling out of there. So Sarah Cell said they're gonna send me another a new bottom that's improved. Uh, so we'll I'll probably put it on right here next to that one. So we'll get that probably next week it'll show up. All these look good here. <laughs> Here's this one. Uh, they're coming out the middle where that's rotted out. So I saw a good tip from Mike Berry. Uh, when you get a box like that, just cut it down, make it a medium, or you can cut it on the, on the joints and uh, just make you some shims. That's a good idea. These all look good here. That one, not much going on here, but there is some activity. Just not heavy. So, and there's a shim on that. So I did put a sugar block in there, which tells me it was light. And that one right there with the brick number two, that's the dead out. And there are plenty of bees in there. They ran out of food and they cold starved out, so froze to death these are all good here so it looks like uh for now we're down one hive this one don't look so great i don't see any activity there oh, there's one bee now i think this one may be gone too all right i'm getting head butted it's time to go okay i'm looking at this hive one some more and I did see a little bit of activity there. So there, I think there's some bees in there. It's just not very strong, but I don't know. Let's get in here and, and see. And I know that number two there next to it's definitely is failed. So I need to get all the frames out of here, get this thing cleaned up uh, because when it starts getting warm, uh, those bodies will start rotting in there from those dead bees. But let's check this hive one real quick. I remember from last year, these two hives were not the strongest. Especially this uh, hive one, I think we combined it uh, later on in the year. I see live bees, so we're good. That's what we want to see. So we know they're up here in the top. Uh, they may have a real small cluster and they're just not warmed up yet. We'll figure it out. Let's check the weight on this thing. Well, it's not super lightweight like they're starving to death. So well, maybe we just got a small cluster for whatever reason, a wheat queen or whatever going into the, into the winter. When I was out here feeding them before, I didn't use any smoke because I didn't bring my smoker. I was in a hurry. I thought I would just set the sugar on there and they'd be fine. So good, good uh, size colony of bees here. I'm curious about their food stores, even though this does feel kind of heavy. I want to, I want to look at a few of these frames and see what we've got. They are sluggish. 
normally that smoke would drive them right on down. So maybe they are out of food and what I'm feeling is just a bunch of heavy uh, wax frames that uh, are empty from food. There's nothing there. A little bit of liquid, not much. And you notice the liquid feeder still here from uh, in the fall. I was really, uh, I remember this hive, I was putting the liquid to it to get it up to weight to get it through winter. And uh, there's sugar on here, or uh, honey on here, capped honey. So that's okay. They've got capped on this next one over. Yeah, that frame has some weight to it. So yeah, I was feeling that when I was lifting it. So we've got honey uh, all out here and all here. And looks like they've emptied out in the center there. And it goes all the way around here. So this isn't a bad size cluster at all. Not sure why there's not a lot of activity out front. So I'm expecting a, a surprise from Hive Alive, so I will uh, hang on. I'm not going to put anything on here. I'm going to wait till I get my Hive Alive package. But they are good. I'd say they've got a good month's worth of stores there if this other side's the same. So in the spring, this will be a candidate to probably rotate. I bet that in, that bottom is totally empty. All right. Well, we woke them up. So I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to mess with this dead out right now. I'm just going to check some weight. This one feels pretty heavy for a single. This one's medium heavy, so these are okay. That's medium heavy. This one is, oh my gosh, freaking weighs a ton. This one's medium heavy. This one over here, you can see it's got a feeder shim, so that one was light. I think I got it on that one too. Yeah, that brick out front. These were light, and that's that day I came out here when I found that dead out. So let's see what it feels like now. Well, let's check the shim. I already determined I needed to feed them. It's not going to mysteriously get heavier, right? So I'd say it's medium heavy. I don't think they're starving out. I just put it on the food on here because I was worried. <laughs> You know, last year I lost a lot of bees, but it was later on in the spring. We had that spring drought followed by long period of rain. So the bees were out of food and they couldn't forage because of the rain. And they flat, and plus they were brooding up at the same time. And they flat ran out of food. I see a few smashed bees up here. I smashed when I was working on it last time because I didn't have my smoke. It was cold. All right, let's uh, try that again. Big old festoon of bees right there. Let's uh, shake them off. So you can see where they've, they've consumed quite a bit of that. Now that it's warm enough, I can check this out and see what's in here as far as stores in the frames. I say I can, it may still be too cold to get these out without tearing up a frame. Use this J-hook tool. Gotta go slow. Notice there's a feeder on this too, which tells me I was feeding it in the fall, trying to get it ready. Little bit of honey there. This is heavy. Yeah. So there's honey on that. And there's about the same amount on that one. So yeah, it didn't hurt to feed them. They didn't need it at the time. 
but one thing by putting that sugar on there that sugar was right on top of their cluster so when it got super cold uh, all they had to do was go straight up they didn't have to go to another frame out on the edge so it's probably a good thing I did put that in there I will go ahead and give them another block just for GPs it's not gonna hurt anything see how the smoke drives them down and that hive number one I smoked them and they just sat there they're lethargic they may still be cold they may get more shade over there all right get our shim back on let's check this one here I got the brick on Now this hive is pretty darn light. So I put this uh, inner cover slash feeder on there as a shim. It's got that hole. Yeah, so the bees are all over on this side. They are small. They should be in a nuke. Some of that sugar is a year old and it's hard it's something i was telling you about earlier i put in the oven see how it's darker but they're consuming it so they survived that two days of below zero and then we had a warm-up one day it got to like 45 50 that's when i put the sugar on and then we had another week that it was below freezing in the teens and 20s for like five six days straight so that sugar probably helped get them through on this one this one has plenty of weight to it over here we're good there still heavy so this hive is good now this one's medium to light This one is fairly light. Uh, I'll, I'll mark these like this. We'll come back and I might put that uh, whole shim feeder on this one. Okay. Oh man, heavy, heavy. This has got a brick, so it means we're feeding it. There's a shim on here. Yeah. It weighs about the same as that one over there that uh, had a little bit of honey in it, so it's probably fine. I'm just gonna go on down the line here. So noting we got bricks on these three right here, we know we're feeding them. Ah, oh, this one's light. This one uh, definitely needs help. And so does this one. We got bees flying, that's a good thing. Uh, this one it's not that good it's got a shim on it I must have run out of bricks <laughs> let's get this uh, off of there so I use that strap and before I put it on there I made sure this lid was propless down tight so because it's pushing against it and man we had some wind out of the north 50 mile an hour plus so you know there was some force against that and this one is heavy so here's all the hives that are basically new from last year except this one right here this is a wildflower meadows hive with their queen and that is heavy this is medium I don't think there's a feeder on this. Nope. That's not a hive. That's not bad. I'd say this is a medium heavy. This has newspaper, so we know this was a combined going into winter. And it don't weigh nothing. It needs, this needs fed right away. I know there's uh, shim feeders on these two nukes and this apame. I want to get in this apame right now and see how they did on that uh, granule sugar. 
So this is an overwintered nuke in an Apame. I went ahead and expanded it up to the seven frames and I took the divider out, got them some food stores in there. I also fed them up during the fall, winter, early winter before it got too cold. And uh, I modified the feeder the day I was out here and flipped the uh, little guard off and I'll show you that. So it's, it'll feed uh, solid sugar. And I spilled some. <laughs> Let's get the lid off of here. And yeah, they've come out and they've ate some, but not much. Not much at all. I thought I would need to fill this up. So there's a bee up in there, so you know they're coming up in it. Get you a close up of that. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So those little plastic things there, you flip it out and, where's my finger? There. <laughs> you flip it out and rotate it and it takes the guard off so the bees can come out into the sugar. You don't you want it the other way when there's liquid so they don't come out and get into the liquid and drown. Let's see if I can get this off here and show you. You could just take it off of there completely. But yeah, see how they come up through there. Now when it's liquid you want it this way so they can't get out in here and not, not be able to get back. So it appears they didn't need any of this. Pull this one up. Yeah, they haven't they haven't hardly touched it. Let's take a peek and see what the hive strength looks like. So these type of, of hives are plastic and they have dead airspace and they have good insulation. So yeah. Lots of good uh, population there. And same thing here. So this hive is strong. So probably the, the coldest part of winter is behind us. But we still need to keep an eye on how much food stores they have. It doesn't feel real heavy. But they're not acting like... Uh, they need that sugar because they're not going to get it. I'm not going to try and pull those frames out. It's good. Yeah, so you get the gist of it. Going through, checking weight, checking shims, making sure the bees have uh, food coming through that hard cold spell we had. And uh, we did find some. Uh, they're on the borderline that they need some, some food in there right now. So that's a good way to do it with these sugar cakes. They're easy to make and uh, you can get them on there fast and it takes a couple days for them to dry and you just get them out there. They're easy to handle and all you need is a little shim to uh, give you some space to get that on there. So make sure you've got some shims handy. Uh, you can never have too many. You need one for about every probably half of the hives that you have uh, for when you need to do this uh, or use some other type of feeder. That's it. Sorry it's been so long since my last video. Uh, just not a lot of content. And uh, I did get a, a new mic for my iPhone. And I, what I did find is I might have made a video if my camera was handy. And instead of busting out the tripod, the whole camcorder and all that, uh, I've seen other beekeepers uh, like Randy, for one, at 628 Dirt Rooster. He uses his phone a lot. And... Uh, so your phone's always with you so there's a lot of times i thought man i could have shot a video of that but i was like nah i got to get this done but i could have shot a short video to at least show you what i was doing you know uh, in the winter so i've got me a a new uh, lav mic and i got a new iphone that's that's nicer and has a, a better camera and so we'll i'll do some tests on that mic and see how that works and uh, maybe I'll, I'll be shooting some videos from that. Some of that other video you saw today was with my uh, uh, DJI Osmo uh, because I have sworn off Gro GoPro, those are junk. Uh, if you saw Randy McCaffrey's video from the uh, beekeeping conference, uh, his video froze and uh, <coughs> it just messed up. That's what mine was doing all the time. And I finally just smashed the hell out of it. And I was like, I am done with that. So yeah, I got me a DJI Osmo 
action and it is great. Uh, I really like it. But anyway, I'll quit rambling and uh, get out of here. Hope to be shooting some more videos here uh, coming up on just feeding. And uh, like I said, I got some unboxings coming up. And uh, we'll catch you on the next beekeeping video. Y'all take care.